Hello, my name is Ron, the son of Chuck and Eloise Robb. My three sisters and I join you today with some MCS memories. I first came to MCS in 1956 as a first grader. That summer term, our class was held at Bexley Cottage, and I believe our teacher was Marge Stewart, sister to Rosie Stewart. Later that year, we were taught by Joan Larson Mitchell. In spring of 57, Don Calderwood was principal. I remember he always walked straight with his shoulders squared. I guess he was 6'2 or so, but it seemed to me like he was about the tallest man there was. Strong, too. The bus couldn't make it up Sands Hill with the train party kids, and I remember Mr. Calderwood carried me most of the way up. In 1960, my father became administrator and principal, a position he filled until 1985. Mom was librarian, typing teacher, and secretary. It often seemed like dad worked from dark to dark. I could see his office window from my bedroom window, and more often than not, I would wake just before dawn to see it lit up. Again at night before sleep, there would be a light on in that office. I remember stopping in his window early one morning and looking in to see him on his knees in front of his office chair. I believe that every student and staff member at MCS was remembered in those prayers. He always made time for his family and for so many other kids. I have been told by many how easy he was to talk to and confide in and how fairly he treated everyone. My name is Becky. I was about eight when we moved into the house above the school. I remember a nolly full of slimy water which ran all the way down the hill across from the school. I ruined three pairs of pants sliding down it before my mom found out what was going on. As staff kids, we spent our 10 day breaks playing cowboys and Indians, building dinky towns in the sandbox and inventing many games in the woods behind the hostel. In my high school years, the big social event was the walk after Singspiration and getting in on the gossip, which couples actually held hands. I was in on the mumps epidemic where the boys and the girls had to stay apart. And I believe Carolyn Buecher won the mump drawing contest when she drew a broken heart. Dad and mom were busy day and night, but they always made time to listen to us and to staff and students alike. Dad was often the voice of the students at the board meeting. At the reunion in Illinois, one of the embassy girls who had joined MCS in her upper grades testified to the friendship that she had received from MCS students, which had taken her a long way into her adult years. When I went home and shared her story with dad, he said with tears in his eyes, that's the kind of thing that makes it all worthwhile. My name is Elaine Raub, and I was born at Rock Edge to Chuck and Eloise in the summer of 57. In 1965 and 71, our family went on furlough, and I remember Irv Nygren, hearing Irv Nygren say to my dad when we returned, Chuck, you've got to quit going on furlough. Every time you leave this country, a war breaks out. My MCS memories include misty Himalaya mountains surrounding a community where every adult was auntie and uncle to us, no matter what country or denomination they hailed from. Walks to Jika for chai and mouth-watering omelets, Kanzaman handing still warm donuts on a plastic plate through my dad's office window so mom wouldn't know as if. The warm-hearted welcome of our national staff and the incredible dedication of those whom God had called from all over the world to give their lives away in the mountains of Pakistan, from hostel builders to teachers to house parents to maintenance men. I once asked my dad what was the best part about his years at MCS. With a tear in his eye, he said, the unity God gave us between staff and board and parents. It was an absolute miracle, a work of the Holy Spirit. And so it was, and so it was. My name is Rachel. I was born in our house on the school grounds in 1961 and I graduated from MCS in 1979. I remember the beauty of the area. I remember the water shortages, the vigily going out quite often and using kerosene lamps for lighting. I remember Lal Hussein, our very kind school sweeper and his little girl. And I remember Salim, the helper of all sorts on staff at MCS. I was at the Interschool Cultural Convention in Kabul 
the year Russia invaded Afghanistan. We ended up having to leave a day or so early. Driving down the Khyber Pass, one of the buses backfired, and we thought for sure we were getting shot at. I would like to honor my parents with a verse that I think exemplifies their life. Proverbs 11.3, the integrity of the upright guides them. Through all the relationships that mom and dad navigated, all the decisions they had to make, they always asked God for guidance and did their best to follow his direction. I think they left a heritage for their own children, but also for many who knew them throughout their time at MCS. Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello, Irv Nygren and Liz and our three kids. We were in Pakistan uh, at MCS for about 18 years after which we spent about 12 years in Islamabad at the International Church, and then our last few years were up in Afghanistan doing ESL. Anyway, the most significant part of, our, of my career of nearly 35 years in South Asia uh, was at uh, MCS. It was the most meaningful part to me. I had been teaching in the States, and then I ended up in Pakistan as an English teacher in 1963. I was very, very pleasantly surprised at the quality of the students. But uh, before I talk about them a little bit more, uh, I do want to say that one of the highlights of being at MCS was being a staff member along with a solid group of people. And we had others that would come and then would go, but there was a basic core that was very solid and um, very good people. They made wonderful friends. They were supportive. Uh, it was a great place to work. I did do several jobs at MCS. I was primarily a teacher, and then I, uh, I, I was vice principal for a while. Not in charge of vice, as all of you know, but second in command. And then I was acting principal occasionally when Chuck and Eloise Robb uh, went on home leave. Of all of the people that I knew at, at MCS, uh, the ones that, that did the most for me and and the ones that, in a way, I remember the best as being the finest time for those years, those were the students. I was, as I said earlier, very pleased to arrive at MCS and find out that the students were quite interested in learning. I'd been in other places, and that wasn't always the case. Not only were they interested, but they were generally very able and quite dedicated to do what you told them. One of the reasons we became teachers is not just so that we could share knowledge, but so that we could develop relationships with people, particularly with students. You may not have known this, but I rather loved being with teenagers. And so the happiest memory I have of MCS were those days, months, and years uh, in, in the classroom uh, with MCS students. They were a challenge, they were generally cooperative, and they were able. And they made teaching rather a, what teaching ought to be, a joy and very self-fulfilling. So I want to thank all of the MCS people, staff, boarding, teaching, and, and as well as our Pakistanis who uh, supported us so ably. But I especially want to uh, say my thanks, my gratitude uh, for the students. I'd like to have them all over again, and I'd probably be about the same kind of a teacher. Thank you. Becoming part of SISA, the South Asia Interschool Association, was one of our very important events for Murray Christian School. It meant that our young people could go to interact with international students in the other schools. 
in sporting events and in cultural events. And for our girls, that was extremely important. One of my great privileges at Murray was to act as one of the hockey coaches. Our first tournament was in Islamabad in 1975. And for several weeks beforehand, we would prepare on the top field, first of all, having to clear off the cow pies and then work hard and go off on the tournament. We didn't do well the first time, but for the next three years, we managed to win and take the trophy back to Murray. One of these tournaments was in Karachi and it was a very hot October. Our, one of our girls, she thought, I'll be able to play much better with my bare feet. And so she took off her shoes. You can imagine what her feet were like at the end. Karen Hicks, who was the other coach at that time, and I bathed her feet in our host's bathtub. And we were terrified because her mum was a doctor and we were fearful for several months afterwards that there would be repercussions. There weren't. Her feet survived, so did we, and we're still friends today. Many years later, on another trip, we were going to Delhi. The previous convention people, the delegates, had their passports stolen. And so Karen and I clung to these passports as we traveled overnight on the train, hoping that nothing would happen to these passports. Coming back from that very same trip, we found out that the boys had put swords that they had purchased in amongst the hockey sticks in the mail bags. Oh my goodness, we had lots of stories to tell, but God was with us through them all. And although we had tears and laughter, we were very thankful to have enjoyed these tournaments. This is Mr Murray remembering some moments at, from his MCS days. Perhaps you remember calling me Bomba. Bomba got the reputation of keeping his students uh, alert by chucking things at them at them, such as chalk for the gills, like soap, uh, <clears throat> and felt blackboard dusters for the boys. The MCS students did fine um, at exams in physics, chemistry and mathematics. The last story was possibly um, the highlight of my teaching at MCS. I taught a 10th grade physics course, which was tough enough to attract mainly boys until one year it was announced that only girls had signed up for the course. I was honoured, but it was with trepidation that I went to start teaching that class. But the girls were great and we ended the year with passes all round. It was yet another reason for thanking God for allowing us to teach at MCS. We love you. We love you all. That's it. Hi, my name is Lottie Weens, now Clausen, and I was at MCS in 1973 to 1975 teaching grades five and six. Even though I spent only two years in Pakistan at MCS, it impacted my life forever. These were some of the richest, most memorable years of my life. I came as a naive, sheltered young teacher from the Bible Belt of the Canadian Prairies knowing no one and very little about the culture and the subculture I was about to be immersed in. I was received with open arms and big hearts. Fellow Canadians, Eunice Hill, Ellen Brell, the Wrights, the Gordons and the Bastions and many others, including Chuck Robb, guided me in the ways of the school, the mission, and the country. My grade four to six students from 10 different countries taught me more than I could ever teach them. I have only fond memories of the staff and students, although I'm sure not all days were pleasant. The Intizam was a special place where we single misabs were fed and nurtured by Umar Dad, our beloved cook. During mealtimes, Ellen Braille would regale us with stories and tidbits of information. She knew everyone and everything about the missionary community, it seemed. Each weekday started with a morning prayer time in my apartment with the other elementary teachers. 
I felt very blessed to have an apartment right above my classroom. It was more than adequate. Even though I had to learn to take pitcher poor baths using only a few cups of water, I remember sleeping with my parka and toque on during the cold nights. In the evenings, I would prepare hot water bottles to put into the bed. And in the morning, I managed to reach out and light the kerosene heater before getting out of bed. I have no idea how the kids stayed warm in the hostel on those cold nights. And then there were the earthquakes, when I would feel my bed shake and the mirror on the wall would sway as I was on the third floor on cement pillars. This prairie girl had no frame of reference for this experience, but I don't remember having any fear. Everything was a new adventure. The days ended with coffee times in Eunice's apartment after her cherubs had been tucked into bed. We would huddle around the kerosene heater, drink chai or some other hot beverage like Ovaltine, chat, laugh and share snacks. On weekends, we teachers took opportunities to hike and explore the area. In addition to regular walks to the Murray Mall, including the Lower Bazaar, Isla Harmsworth, a high school French teacher from Scotland, and I explored places like the Gadial British Graveyard and the Piers Village, a mere dot in the valley below MCS. This was a much more ambitious undertaking than we had bargained for. I think it took us most of the day. We were glad that Steve Thrasher accompanied us on this trek and that the village pier actually gave us a warm welcome. And then there was our memorable trip to Gilgit and Skardu with Elizabeth Johnson and Derek Tubby. How amazing to see this majestic part of the world. I think I left part of my heart there. It was a real boost to me when my good friend Helen came to visit for three months. MCS made such an impression on her that after she got married, she returned to MCS. Helen and Lauren Craker served as dorm parents for eight years. And now Pakistan comes up in our conversations with nearly every time we visit. My fondest memories of the classroom were taking my students outside. We would have story time out on the oval stone wall in front of the hostel and science classes in the hillside behind the school. We would also line up and march down to the high school for music and singing around the piano. One spring, Karen Johnson and I even put on an ambitious musical, The Prince and the Pauper, with the help of Eunice and several other staff. Our kids had amazing talent. Judith and Richard Fidge had the leading roles and managed to pull off the look-alike Prince and Popper with flair. The parents of my students were all so supportive too. Even though they were far away, they managed to touch base somehow. I remember Mrs. Wilder being especially encouraging for me. I still treasure the jewelry box, which she arranged for the class to give me as a farewell gift. It's amazing to me that the parents put such trust and faith in us. I'm sure I messed up a lot, and the kids' memories of those elementary years may be very different than mine. Will Moppy Heaton ever forgive me for cutting his mop of hair so he could see his schoolwork? May grace abound. I counted a huge privilege that I could still be in touch with some of my students via Facebook so many decades later. What a blessing. I'll never forget the day I got a phone call from Gavin Murray. He was calling to say he was in the area. Oh, whereabouts are you, Gavin, was my response. Oh, I'm in New York. We were living in central Canada, about 1,600 miles away. Goes to show it's all in perspective. What is a few thousand miles? After all, we were now on the same continent. There is a bond in our MCS community which transcends geography. My winters were mostly spent at the Multan Hospital. Dr. Robson and Elsie Moore and the rest of the staff were so patient with my curious questions 
and encouraged me to go for my own training at home. And so it was that I went back home to enter nurses training. Nursing is a career I have loved for 42 years, but I wouldn't trade my four years of teaching for anything, especially not the two years I spent at MCS. I will ever be grateful for that rich experience. My name is Tom Nygren. I graduated from MCS in 1981, almost exactly 40 years ago. The closing of MCS prompted me to write these reflections a few months ago, and I was asked to read them for the ceremony today. MCS was special for me, and I think for many people. I know that this statement is true, and perhaps even obvious to the people listening to me today, but to explain why MCS was special takes some thought. It is not that MCS was perfect. In fact, it would be easy to come up with a list of its shortcomings. Certainly, not all of the teachers or dorm parents were the most qualified. Facilities and resources were often barely adequate, and not all of our classmates were always kind. Without a doubt, there was plenty of sadness, loneliness, and even bullying. Some students fell between the cracks or felt crushed by an institution that was governed by bells and rules. So why then was MCS so special for me and for so many of us? Some of my classmates might respond that my experience was different because I was a staff kid and I would be the last to deny that being a staff kid didn't have its advantages. Most significantly, of course, not having to go through the trauma of being put into boarding at a young age, although I did experience boarding in high school. So yes, uh, being a staff kid undoubtedly did color my experience, but that is not the whole story. I attended MCS every year except for kindergarten, fifth grade, and half of ninth grade. Most of my classmates also attended nearly every year as a result, we knew each other more as brothers and sisters than as schoolmates. As mentioned earlier, I graduated in 1981, the 25th anniversary of the founding of the school. I remember that fact because it featured in my valedictorian speech. In my speech, I also referenced, to much hilarity, the state of the high school toilets. Without going into detail, I will just mention that one of the duties, or was it a privilege, of being a senior in those days was taking turns being the potty monitor. The potty monitor was the official in charge of flushing the toilets twice a day. This was definitely not one of the reasons MCS was special. In truth, it is easy to forget that we complained about many things at MCS. With all of the wisdom of youth, we complained about the food, the frequent electricity outages, the smoky kerosene lamps and heaters, the lack of water for flushing and bathing, the insensitive dorm parents, the mean teachers, the excessive homework, the arbitrary rules about length of hair and skirts, the censorship of music lyrics and prohibition of innocent fun like playing cards and dancing, the pathetic but sometimes weirdly hilarious Saturday night movies Note the quotation marks around the word movies. The restrictions on girls and what they could wear and where they could go. The lack of freedom in general. The limited facilities for sports and fun. Shall I go on? I think not. Because in the end, none of these things really affected the specialness of MCS. Perhaps in a strange way, they even added to it. No. The number one reason MCS was special, and I think most of us would agree, was the people, especially our classmates, but also the staff members, both local and international, whom we knew truly cared for us, and some of whom were willing to cross the oceans and work for a pittance to invest their lives in us. And I believe that one reason the relationships were so special was that they were forged in such a unique place. I suppose every place in the world is unique in its own way. How can it not be? But may I suggest that MCS was more unique than average? We understood that even then. In part, it was Murray, the place itself. 
the hill station in the foothills of the Himalayas, the vistas of dusty plains below, the majestic snowy peaks on the horizon, the fog rolling in from the valleys, the pine trees, the flying squirrels, the jackals, monkeys, cicadas, the villages with their picturesque terraced fields descending down the hillside, the narrow curving roads with perilous drop-offs, the torrential rains and terrifying lightning storms. But more than that, it was Pakistan. For many of us, the land of our birth. The language and the people, the colorful flowing clothes, the incredible food, the spices and smells, the smoky tea shops in Chikagali, the jam-packed Suzuki's and extravagantly decorated buses with passengers hanging out the doors and sitting on the roofs, the bazaars and tikka shops, the five times a day call to prayer, the roadside food stalls, the mud houses with cow dung drying on the walls, all of the magic and mystery that surrounded us every day, which we knew was amazing and special. Or perhaps we didn't realize it as much as we should have, as much as we do now looking back. But as I have said, most of all, MCS was special because of the people. Even now I grieve those lost friendships, which are perhaps in a certain way irreplaceable. And I grieve the place I can never go back to that will always haunt my memories, a place that is difficult to understand, much, as, much less explain for anyone who hasn't been there. The night of our graduation, the 15 members of the class of 1981 went into Murray and we ate our favorite food at our favorite restaurants. The normally strict rules were relaxed that last night and we stayed out far past our normal curfew. Some of us even smoked cigars, an offense that would have had serious life-changing penalties on any other night. Goodbye, we said as we gave our final hugs. We'll see each other again. We'll have reunions. We'll stay in touch. And we did try to stay in touch. But that night, we knew something special was ending. Goodbye, MCS. I will miss you. <laughs>